Welcome back to week eight of the North American LCS. Hello, I'm James Dash Patterson, and holding down the fort with me is the Da Vinci of puns, <laughs> David Freak Turley. Thanks for sticking it out with me, man. Of course. All right, we're going to dip right into that LCS mailbag to see what you've been saying over on Twitter. To remind you, we were asking who is the most unpredictable player in the NALCS and why. Our first response comes from at Kane Melvin. It's got to be Vasily. You never know when he's just going to solo rocket jump into your whole team. That's true. I don't think his team knows either, to be completely fair. The guy just like makes choices, and you're like, I'm not sure that was the best one. I mean, like 80% of the time it works out, but uh, he's, a, he's a crazy one. I was going to say, they do a damn good job of following it up. Yeah. I mean, they'll trust him. It, it's just wrong occasionally. <laughs> All right. Our next one comes from at DMiles94. Wes Strice. He isn't a calculative robot. He sees a chance and takes it. Not always does it work out in his favor, though. Well, LOL. And I got to say, Wes Rice is probably uh, very much up there as the most unpredictable player. Yeah, he picks fights out of nowhere, and you never know what it's going to be. He's aggressive. Yes. You can't fault him for going after what he wants. All right, our next one comes from at Kalu77. Probably with his Annie pick and his patented feed to win Yasuo, you can't tell what he'll do next. But again, kind of like West Rice, he's probably just going to dive you all the time regardless. And to be fair, I mean, if the strat is 0-4-1 Yasuo to win the game, I wouldn't predict that either. But hey, if it works for him, it works for him. That's right. If it works, it works. At J Fabski has our final one. I think Bjergsen is the most unpredictable player, mainly because you never know when he is going to dive you and wreck your face. I like how it's a whole bunch of just highly aggressive players. That, like at some point, and you never know when they're going to kill you um, or or die to you. Either one, you know, could work out for this. Um, Bjergsen, at least at a certain point, you know he's probably going to make the smarter choice. I think he's probably the most consistent of the aggressive players. Mm. Um, now, again, you might still not see it coming in, but yeah, he'll probably kill you when that happens. Um, unfortunately, with the rest of the tweets, I think we're missing three players. It's the rest of complexity, because that team will just do anything, and you never know. Of course, admittedly, a very, very unpredictable team. All right, well, keep those answers coming our way. Hit us up at LOL Esports and use the hashtag LCS so we can find them in the digital void. Now we're going to throw it over to Riv and Jat for our next match. Thanks, Dash. And we're going to keep the games rolling with our next matchup. That's CounterLogic Gaming versus Team Solo Mid. And this is the first of our two battles for first place today. But this yeah. is a rivalry that's as old as Competitive League of Legends itself. Yeah, there's a lot of hype between this one. And honestly, what do you really say? <laughs> there's kind of like competing chants by the crowds. I know most of TSM. And it's been a long time. <laughs> since a regular season match has meant this much between these two teams. It's actually the first time that TSM and CLG are tied for first in the regular season, yeah. and they've actually split their previous games. This split 1-1. One, one. Doesn't get any better. Both these teams want to win so badly that the pressure can cause players to make mistakes they normally wouldn't. Yeah, and we've seen Doublelift actually play a little skittish against TSM this split. Mm -hmm. And he admitted that in his last game against TSM that he was trying to anticipate Glebe's hooks before they were thrown out. And as a result, he actually walked or flashed right into some of them. Really. Yeah, that's not the way you want it to work out. On the side of Team Solo Mid, we've seen Dyrus as well shaking up the script and pulling out new champs in recent weeks, including a top lane Gragas for himself. Yeah, and in one of our interviews, he attributed a lot of success actually to adapting and borrowing from what other yes. Players do well, which is interesting because Dyrus has this reputation of being a very slow to adapt player who takes many games on champions. And while that's a little bit true, he does put the time in, and over time he will adapt, and it leads to success. That's why he's been around since season one. Right, Dyrus brings a singular focus to his games against Counter Logic Gaming. One goal that propels him to be all that he can be. When I prepare for CLG, the first thing I have to do is make sure my team's happy with what I'm doing. And then I just have to do my job so much better than Seraph. So when the game comes on to the late game, I can just screw over double it. That is my ultimate pleasure in playing at CLG. Well, there you have it. Yeah. Some people. Well, it's actually Glebe that ended up getting the best of double of last time. Yeah. But Dyrus definitely wants to become that super tank. And I'm going to be watching the matchup between Dyrus and Seraph here. If he doesn't dive, keep diving for that back line, I'm going to be pretty sad. Let's check out the starting lineups who will be in this match. On the blue side, it's going to be Counter Logic Gaming. In the top lane, that means it's Seraph with Dexter in the jungle, Link it at mid lane. Double lifted AD carry and none other than Aphromu on support. And this red side is Team Solo Mid with Dyrus himself in the top lane, Amazing in the jungle, Bjergsen in mid, and then of course Wild Turtle and Glebe on AD carry and support. Get themselves set up and readied. Laughs coming from both sides. Obviously yeah. have 
been watching and waiting for mm-hmm. some of the long and or short games that we've had today, but both teams looking to get the win very yeah. early. And I'm really interested to see how this new patch of champion select yeah. works out for them. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this game is going to be less than 80 minutes long. Mm. So it's going to be a, a medium-sized one. Are you using your crystal yeah. ball for that one? I think so. I think we're not going to have the longest game in LCS history. The previous games between these guys, uh, actually a very quick win by CLG in game one. Yeah. That was the infamous cow ball game, 28 oh, minutes. Man. Uh, but the last one Great. was a one-sided victory for TSM that went 38 minutes. Yeah. Uh, there actually hasn't been an incredibly close game between these two teams this split. Well, let's see how far they can separate each other here in Champion Select. The bands to come out. See some mid focus bands for sure, but an interesting first band Renekton. Yeah, I'd I was say. actually doing a lot of pick band research into this game in particular right. just because I wanted to see how the matchup had kind of evolved over time. And they do share very, very similar champion pools. But one interesting thing about Dyrus is he is actually undefeated on Renekton in the top lane this year. And Team Solomon in general, when they play against CLG, really heavily focused the laning phase. Dec- uh, Dyrus and Shivana has been very poor against CLG in general. So with the Renekton ban, they are pushing Dyrus in one direction. Also getting the Kogma out, really taking away any of those kind of TSM fallbacks that they would want for a late game, or like you said, a very strong Dyrus lane so far. Good bans with the Lulu coming out, just a flex ban overall, coming from Team Solo mid until they can really target something out that they know is going to give them the lead. Yeah, and it's a very tricky pick and ban phase yeah. for this, these two teams. Another thing that I noticed that was a difference between the teams is their pick ban usage of Ziggs, actually. Uh, hmm. CLG has banned Ziggs away something like five times this split, uh, yet never had it banned against them, and Link has only played it once. So there would be a decent chance that TSM would want to try to extend this game a little bit with a Ziggs pick if it ends up falling that way. Pretty much two clear-cut lane win bans coming from Asindra and Renekton. and Cassidy even goes out as well. The mid gets its fair share of bans, but they quickly lock in that rise, seeing yeah. how well it can do in the top lane. Could be some big top lane control for them here. Uh, Dyrus would almost have to go back to something like Gragas here, which he's been playing a lot of. It's not a good showing. But I mean, Quas did have that good Gragas game, but not exactly the late game damage turret that Rise could become. Right. So if that lane were to happen, it would probably benefit CLG in the late game. Couple really early rise picks we've seen in the North American LCS today. Cloud9 picked it on their rotation through like TSM has right here with their second and third overall picks. Uh, but CLG just locks in the first pick over top of Lee Sin. So it could definitely be something that Amazing wants to pick up here. Very, very true. Good point about the Lee Sin. Rise is just kind of that overall easy guy to grab. It doesn't tell you what kind of composition is coming at you. A little more late game than usual, but it's going to wow. be really TF Trist. Will those be the lock ins for Team Solo Mid? So much is open right now, but that's going to be their cream of the crop in this game. Jeez. Wow. Some really interesting things going down here. How junglers were not prioritized whatsoever. Still. Yeah. yeah. Even though Amazing has been someone who can get easily pushed onto Jarvan. Uh, his Elise scores this year are also spectacular. CLG would rather target ban, uh, which is generally what they do. They're not one to do power bans as much because they're comfortable playing against pretty much anything. And it's very interesting how TSM picked away the TF. They're seemingly in this matchup valuing taking things away from CLG more than just running their own strategy, which is a little bit of a change of pace for TSM. Yeah. They're the ones that kind of follow suit with something they've slightly adapted. Yeah. There's going to be the Elise. Dexter loves it. When it's open, he will take it. And Afrimu goes for the Morgana of this game. Yeah, Elise was the most prolific jungler for both of these guys. As far as victory is concerned, even though everyone talks about Amazing's Lee Sin and how spectacular it is, yeah. he has much more success on Elise. So Dexter locking that down, I think is a smart move. What can they get themselves now in? It's not even going to be that jungler just yet. They're holding that out to the late. You can see the jungler, but they want yeah. their support in the top lane. Nami is a support that Glebe actually favors very heavily. Aphromoot has not had success on Nami, whereas Glebe right. has. And that's very small differences between these guys because they all play each other's champions, but they show slight preferences. 
yeah, absolutely. for their own. I really want to see Doublelift's 80 carry choice here because he gets to pick from pretty much anything. He has really favored Twitch lately, but Twitch does have a bit of a weakness to Twisted Fate. I'm trying to figure out through. That Illusion would be the only it's one. It's the generic Obviously pick. there, but you need a dash. You got to get away from gold cards when they're teleporting at you. You need to get out of bubbles. Lucian is safer in lane than pulling out that Jinx. And it's going to be the Yasuo coming out for Link. He pulls that out again. We've seen him get a little too aggressive, but the team's kind of able to band-aid that, even if it does happen. And Riv, we've seen Link really break out yeah. Yasuo recently, but this is definitely not the comp built for it. He's picking it for a matchup That's against true. Twisted Fate, but they do not have any knockup synergy for Link. He is completely responsible for his own ultimate cooldowns. And actually, the Lee Sin for doesn't even pick Lee Sin. A second game in a row, not banned or picked. Last game it was, but the first game of the day it went all the way through. Again here, the late game is really being focused on these teams. We'll see what the Eve pick can do for Amazing if he can get some early game action going. It's Dexter's job to really cancel that out and shut it down. Very interesting picks coming out of this champion select, especially with yeah. the Trist TF prioritization for Team Solo mid to start. Even the Eve is a little bit curious Yeah, compared to Lee Sin. I mean, it almost seems like they're going to try even harder to sneak up behind uh, CLG and try and finish off a few kills. For all the Lee Sin Elise stuff that Amazing has, we've seen an incredibly small amount of Eve out of him. So yep. a couple first-time things coming out in this game. It should be a very exciting match to give us a temporary team alone in first place. Yeah, that's true. This is a first place matchup. Who's going to grab it on this one? Let's check in with the good folks over at LOLesports.com to see how you've been voting. Currently, TSM leads CLG with 56 percentages. It's going to be a close vote. You can keep voting every time a buff gets stolen, if someone gets ganked, if a turret goes down. That's right. You can update who prevails at LOLesports with the hashtag CLG or TSM. Or you can just hashtag, then the fans will start chanting a name, and you can just put win after that. Yeah. And that'll generally give you the team that's doing well. Lock it down. In there's, no, there's no points for voting right. You can tell your friends <laughs> we're right, and then you'll always be right. That still counts, actually. A lot of, a lot of bets are just about pride, Riv. That's true. Yeah. That but whether true. you know you got it right or not. <laughs> See if CLG can get themselves into that first place spot. Really, for, for previous splits, they've kind of been a 500 team. They'll always be able to compete mm -hmm. with the top caliber, but lose a few of those top games, get their wins off lower tiers. This time, it's been a complete back and forth between the top teams, and CLG has been won. So has Team Solo Mid, and we're going to see how they duke it out on the rip right now. Game three, week eight. We're going to see who takes first place for a game. Summoner spell update as we get into this game as well. Double lift with the cleanse against Twisted Ooh. Fate and Eve. Definitely does not want to get locked up by those Twisted Fate gold cards into the back line. Remember back in the day when he would play Vayne and he'd just run that because he didn't trust yeah. his positioning? And also because <laughs> Mikhail's Crucible wasn't in the game, but it's yeah, nerfed that's true. now, so it takes longer for a team to get it. Aphromo with a rare miss on his Dark Binding. There's a sweeper we usually see. Dexter maybe going back after this and grabbing himself a trinket for the ward placement. Good little sneak out here by Amazing. He's going to be able to get a nice ward. Hopefully he can get himself out safely. They are this? really doing a bit of a pinch move here. A good uh -huh. ward right in the mid lane by CLG has actually given away quite a bit. CLG has accomplished ward control at the enemy red. But it was not for free, as nope. you can see. Wild Turtle snuck himself in, placed a nice ward into CLG's red buff as well. This will give early game knowledge to jungle starts, which, quite honestly, if things play out like this and Amazing does start at red, it would give CLG a very slight advantage early on because the main strength of EVE early is that first gank that cannot be warded by Trinkets but they'll be able to better predict it when they know that he started red yep. buff. Especially going down to the duo lane, if he tries to hit that, it'll be easier to disengage once he gets into it, especially with Aphra Moon double lift having some bindings and the safety of Black Shield. It'll help here for Dexter as we start off. Well, not standard buff takes, but Dexter's gonna end up on the top and Amazing on the bottom side. We'll see how that plays out. Another Gragas game. Like you said, we're gonna watch Seraph and Dyrus in that top lane for a little bit to see how they fare. 
both have been getting more consistent in their play throughout the season. Yeah, Darius is one-on-one -on, -one on top lane Gragas, I think. Mm -hmm. Pretty good at it, actually, in lane. Locos calls Darius the best top lane Gragas in North America. Oh. So he has a lot of confidence in his ability to play that up top. We'll see. My mom says I could be president. <laughs> so <laughs> see how that works out. Good binding coming in from Afro Moo. Ooh. Wow, a lot of caster minion damage. Glebe is just taken down to half health there. So Rush Hour seems to get a bit of the win in HP, but nobody's level two yet, so they haven't really tried to go hard on any executions. Daxter picking up the blue. We're going to get the junglers out into the lanes in at least a minute and a half here. Coming up on that three-minute mark, we'll see a few more of those trinkets going down as they're coming up. Yeah, and speaking of early game here, Riv, amazing hitting level three. Uh, this mid lane is a little interesting. We've seen some... Uh, strange starts in the mid lane, like Boots first, the Poe Belter did, as Rise the yeah. other day. Link mm -hmm. has gone Boots first on Yasuo as well here. And he's done a few other things differently too. He has 1% in crit runes. So he did run Which crit. is doubled by Yasuo's passive, so it's his 2%. But he's also <laughs> running 5% lifesteal. So he's running lifesteal quints on Yasuo mid. Hmm. And the Boots to help him dodge around in that mid lane. Oh, the flash! There is the beautiful consecutive laid on crowd control. Great job, Dexter, to help Seraph in the top lane. First blood. Be called the best top lane, Gragas. But if you don't ward your lane at 3 minutes 30 seconds, near, near. Elise and Rise will get you. Well, there's a little bit of denial on the damage from Flo. Amazing is left waiting in the brush. Looks like he won't be seen here, so he'll get another attempt. But I like Link's idea. He says, I pushed out of lane, it's evened out, I'm going to take Wraiths. Good pressure by Amazing to or keep it he? on. There's a friend. Ah. Ooh. Link took a lot of damage for that, too. Really good counter jungle there by Amazing to try and get back at that CLG gank. One kill going to Dexter. Oops. The thing with the Dyrus death actually is, as far as it being isolated to the lane, he really wasn't harmed very much by that. Mm. His lane opponent, Seraph, only got an assist. Dexter, or Dyrus, didn't even have time to burn his flash because of the chain crowd control. Right. And he teleported right back to the lane as it was shoving. So when all is said and done after that gank, he's down 150 gold and... You have the chance to turn feet. that around, too. Yeah. Once Amazing gets himself to the top lane, a possible gank for them. TSM not really even on the back foot after that one, but we do see that CLG kind of sticks with Dexter helping Seraph in the early part of the game, making sure that he will have a slight snowball to work off of. Keep himself nice and strong. Back and forth, he's going to be able to farm under the turret very well, stacking up the tier as well, so no problems for him. Mm -hmm. Get a little invade here from Amazing, so they'll know about a little bit of denial, and if they see that the camps are missing, where Dexter is. They might have a good inkling. Yeah. CLG Riv had a really strange super week that I kind of wanted to touch on. Yeah. In one of the games, they looked spectacular. They beat up Cloud9, in large part because Seraph and Dexter had a lot of ganks up top on Abolus' Kale and just really snowballed that lane out and looked incredibly coordinated. Yeah. Yet when you look at their super week as a whole, they went two and two. One of their wins was when they were down 5,000 gold at 20 minutes to complexity and still managed to come back. Yeah. So they very well could have went one and three. It's really about which CLG shows up and how can they actually capture some type of consistency. The fact that they got the early gank off right here is a very good sign, especially since Seraph on a late game champion right yeah. here, who has had a bit of an up and down performance this split, <laughs> does so well. Yeah, they saw it there, but he was a little bit scared of E popping out because he had no backup right. from the Elise. They're going to want to go back for that one later. Five hits is a very dangerous amount of time, if you will, to stand still. 6.09 on the clock. Bjergsen gets down to pink ward, so it looks like teams mm -hmm. feel that they have enough control to start grabbing portions of the map. We've got to hover here from Amazing. I don't know if he wants to fully go in on this engage. He's not level 6 yet. Right. Which is a really important moment. He's wasted a lot of time up here. He and just took Seraph Wraith and he's been chilling. Full health. They need Quite a breath. lot of confidence if they want to dive this. They're probably going to try and get Bjergsen up there if they really do want to dive. It's where he's roaming to right now. But the Pink Ward should see this. And Seraph, he's going to realize he's in a whole heap load of trouble if Bjergsen gets any farther. He's just running away right now because he knows that if the Twisted Fate came, he would die. It was a really good ward actually by Link that saved Seraph's skin there. Very close for him. Link's actually, or Bjergsen rather, just on enough mana to really get Destiny up there, so it might have been a flopped call. 
we're gonna see that Amazing still stays. Controlling White, controlling that top side of the jungle. We got 7.15 coming up for the blue buff. And we gotta remember, Dexter started red, so that's gonna come up a little bit later, and doesn't look like do DSW's this gonna be waiting DM. on this. They go for Amazing first. Great control for the turret going on to Dyrus. He flashes, that's still up from the previous engage while Seraphs is down. Good gank, honestly. Yep. Tier first on Rise, going the aggressive route. Just the health crystal. Yeah. Dyrus tanking the turret aggro very early so that Amazing can get a good amount of damage down because he knew he had his flash up as well. That was just a well executed turret dive. Knowing that turrets are more powerful on this patch as oh, well yeah, that's makes true. it an even more impressive dive. He waited. Amazing got what he wanted out of it. Seraph calls for the teleport back to the top lane as gets that siege minion crashing into the turret. Not a problem. You know, Bjergsen roaming back to the mid lane, but Dexter's focus is on the bottom. And just getting the drop out. Nothing coming off of that one. Yeah, Dexter ran over top of an expiring ward there, so the gank was kind of doomed from the beginning unless Aphromoo had landed a dark binding, which could be then chained with the Elise Cocoon. Good timing on the jump from Wild Turtle to get away. That dark binding lands, though. You see Dexter actually roaming around with the Spectral Wraith. And he's decided to build up. Mm. Last game we saw the Elise Quilco. This will be a fun one. Yeah. See how much damage Elise gets to do. Whether he goes just this Spectre Wraith for the jungle clear, or if he decides to go ability power afterwards. Many in Assassin Elise have started showing up in solo queue. Ah. I know a lot of Meteos' match history was very, very high kill numbers. <laughs> Chunk of Elise <laughs> with Spectre Wraith. It's quite a threat, but very squishy. Well, we know Dexter loves to put up a threat. He's always down for building all damage Vi, so... Yeah, that's true. ...be any trouble here because he puts it on to an Elise that he can be even safer on with the full force engages. Still waiting for Amazing to hit kind of a spike there. He does have a six, but he doesn't have the Lizard built up yet. He's still trying to make ganks work, or at least counter what he's trying to sense in the bottom lane. Movement towards Dragon says the TSM, especially with this push, kind of wants that objective soon. We have Bjergsen coming out of base, so they may be looking at it. They may be on a collision course here. There's a lot of respect being traded with these two lanes at this moment. The amount of Dark Bindings that have been landed on the Glebe, but then not followed up on yeah. because COG is really worried hesitant. about the, even the Twisted Fate, honestly. And the fact that Doublelift is running Cleanse, which as far as lane trades is suboptimal. There it is. Set into place. Checkmate for the first Dragon, easily taken by Team Solo mid. Had the timing there, and they actually get CLG on full backs as well. So Bjergsen's going to return to an open mid lane. He gets the push in and deny some experience. Very good play there for Team Solomit. Recognize that Dyrus had the teleport advantage. Mm -hmm. Went forward at the right moment. A Morellonomicon being completed on Bjergsen as well. Early amount of power right here. It's kind of the rushed item if you're looking to be good right away in the mid game. TSM definitely wanting to win this one in the mid game. Wild Turtle is their late game insurance yeah. to try and stick with it later if it gets there. It's also nicely going to cut through Link as he uses that lifesteal runes to try and get healed if they go into a pretty low fight. It's a really good build. Slowly moving himself up. Dexter waiting in the wings. Seraph brought a friend, but Dyrus is much tankier than he was at level 3 when he was pushed up into this spot. That's the thing. Catalyst lane. Everybody's healing every time they level. You're <laughs> really not doing anything. Dexter made it into the brush, but then Dyrus went the other <laughs> way. So. Thanks for coming. Sneaky little fat man right there. Gragas. Ooh, here comes Amazing now. So they're saying, when you return to lane, let's see what we can get out of this. It'll be interesting to see if he shows himself. This could be a fantastic counter gank if Amazing times man. it right. Get him a Dexter to nickname of the waiter. He's always here in the brush. Come. There he is. Oh, it's amazing! Pie oh, in the wow. face! Oh, Dyrus! How did he slip past that one? The rappel comes down. It's gonna be one last spell fuck. He doesn't get it to work! He could actually turn this one around. Here comes Bjergsen. The gold card was just in range. Is the rest of it? The hit goes to Bjergsen with the assist going across to Dyrus. What a TSM turnaround. Big plays right there from the TSM solo lanes. Obviously, Amazing came up there, and the Evelyn Shield came in at just the right Ooh. moment taking down Seraph and Dexter in a 2-4-0. Very, very close. Gritting their teeth as they went in for that one. A huge burst of damage you can see coming.
from the bottom lane while Turtle and Gleeve doing what they can. CLG's desperate now to make a move. They pressure down to the bottom turret, but they don't get a dive. They may just get the turret. Yeah, CLG trying to combat Whoa. right there. Link gets it. That's Link. He has to activate his own ultimates. Now initiated by him, they go by his call and continue to get kills. Doublelift will make it out alive on the second turret shot. Wow, so a very successful roam there by Link. That's exactly what CLG needed to do to combat the double kill in the top lane. It's just very rare that you see a brute force gank down bottom like yeah. that actually work out. It's all because Link could land this knockup. This is it more was impressive another one of those flash E's to get the Q knockup like yep. we saw in the last game. And then even better is Doublelift was able to pick up that double kill, which maybe can translate into the mid-game power that CLG needs so much from Lucian when compared against Wild Turtle's Tristana. And you know, you, you can see how comfortable they even feel after that. Double Lift says, that put me so close to what I need. I'm gonna stay and farm because we have so much control now. He's gonna go ahead, go back. A 13 minute Infinity Edge for him at two and zero. Yeah, Infinity Edge versus Static Shiv. Yeah. Obviously Turtle can shove the lane, but now it is on CLG to crush. Loco Doco saying there it is. have the comp they want. Hashtag TSM oh. win. He has voted, coming from the coach. We'll see what they can do as, or yeah, analyst, I should say, as they move themselves coach up. Coach and analyst. Indeed. It's a fine line. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a fine line. Rod of Age is being stacked up now for Dyrus. He is a few minutes ahead now on a non-stacking rod for Seraph, so that lane will start to go in his favor. Already 30 CS ahead there with the bit of help that he's gotten from the rest of the team. Even though Dexter was up there to help Seraph, TSM made sure that lane would still go down. This has become a very interesting game here, Riv. A lot of power right here from the Gragas and the Twisted Fate. Yeah. The question will be whether Turtle gets weighed down here by how much more powerful Double Lift is than him right now with that Infinity Edge. A lot will weigh on how well Link can actually get off his solo Yasuo walls with no assistance from the rest of the team. If we even get team fights to materialize, because right now TSM, with the even the Twisted Fate, hold a lot more map control than CLG. Two teleports is always chaotic to have to control. Anybody can get picked out or pushed out right now, especially with the big size of Dyrus. He clears out a ward on the top side. And it looks like CLG is actually going to go ahead, or rather TSM is going to go ahead and take control of that side of the jungle once they can clear out two more pink wards. CLG is really trying to grasp for strings here and get themselves back in the game. Only down 2,000 gold, but the map control is worth a lot more than that. Yeah, he just <laughs> he just barreled that to himself. Very nicely done. So Dyrus is being a pest as well yeah, in all the other lanes. He's causing all kinds of trouble right now, Riv. And he's pushing me. CS, especially after getting first blooded. We mentioned that it didn't affect him individually too much. You know, yeah. that he could just teleport back into the lane mm -hmm. and he saved his flash. This is the first turret for CLG. It's a tale of two lanes right now. Dyrus crushing the top lane. Double for Nafimer with the help of Link. Doing very well bottom. Yeah. And the dragon in 20 seconds. But again, Dyrus has teleport. Seraph does not. I think Seraph's just gonna walk down there. Looks like it. Yeah, he'll make it in time. Pink Ward goes down. TSM knows already two Pink Wards. They have the upper hand. Mm -hmm. They don't have to Three. worry. <laughs> Three Pink Wards in the Dragon area. CLG would almost want to push mid off of this rather than trying to contest yeah. because the pick potential, if they run in blind like this, is way too high. But TSM does have to be cautious because they don't know for certain that COG is so blind right now. The pink wards definitely help with that though. Easily telling just by their movement where the line of vision stands for CLG. And Tornado was down now from Link. He needs to go hit a few creeps, stack his Q right. up if he Can't wants to get, get that it. back. He cannot get any assistance here. Two. This would give TSM a window to do Dragon, but then they would lose their mid turret because it's a five man push in the mid. CLG really playing a dangerous game here. Very nicely get pushed. It. Turret for a Dragon Dance, a three-man flash, stomach bump. Dyrus coming in big on that one, and it looks like they are going to push out CLG. Was it enough, though? Was slamming his stomach against Counter-Logic Gaming <laughs> enough for Dragon? It looks like so, Riv. He got him pretty low amongst all that. But at the same time, the follow-up was not very quick from the rest of TSM. Gold being traded back. It's a turret for a Dragon. A pretty even trading gold. Too bad.
2K still sits in the favor of Team Solo mid. Seeing if Doublelift can get any of these Infinity Edge shots off. He's got it. Now he's just been farming with it. Nobody really wants to meet him in that spike of power. TSM is playing this with knowing that Wild Turtle's a little bit less powerful right now. He's definitely in the farm world. And it is very difficult for COG to pull them back in this game right now, too. Yeah. Everywhere they go, there's potentially a Bjergsen who is sitting on his TF alt and with the Morellonomicon has a very high amount of damage. COG kind of has to sit back and get dictated to by TSM here, which is not ideal when they know they have that Tristana on the other side that they're going to have to deal with eventually. Very interesting that they can't get Seraph big enough at this point. It's going to take a while before he can really be a split push threat. Dyrus can easily push him out. So they're waiting on a lot. The timer is ticking for them. A big difference between the rise we see in this game from Seraph and the rise we saw in last game from Balls. Yeah. Uh, lane matchup has a lot to do with that. The Gragas is potentially the most imposing top laner that we have in League of Legends right now. It's one of the reasons he has picked up so much popularity. And one of the big reasons Dyrus gravitates mm -hmm. towards that champion so much. For the same reasons that COG banned Renekton, they want to stop TSM from having lane dominant champions. Yet Gragas fits right into that more. Right. It's almost the perfect pick for them in this scenario. So you can almost hold it, but if you don't, then it just becomes too much. That's where Dyrus has gotten himself to right now, and CLG's trying to pull themselves back from that little incident. Still a lot of control going around around the Baron Pit, or Dragon Pit rather, even though it's gone. It's just where TSM is protecting Dyrus, keeping the split push going. Trying to hold mid. They're just giving Seraph time to farm top as well. See if he can get that rod charged and get this late game going for CLG. That's really their only option at this point. But yeah. then they're looking at Wild Turtle. It's kind of uh, damned if you do, damned if you don't. And we know the gold is still pretty close. Yep. The late game teams aren't much different. They balance out in power fairly mm -hmm. evenly, which makes this game still very contested. It will be about a lot of picks for now in this stage of the game. It's about finding the right fight. Whether Link can land those nice tornadoes to get double if some safety to finish things off, whether Seraph can stay in a farming place where he can actually go and get his items, yeah. or whether Bjergsen finds the right Twisted Fate ultimates. Right now, they oh almost are amazing. This but is this is exposing them a little bit. Bit of an odd position for Dyrus to be in no here. Ultimate. The ult is not up, and he gets taken down. CLG just cuts through the fog of war. And, and look at control. this. All the wards that TSM had in the Dragon Pit, but CLG came from above that point, which really messed up TSM. And they're not actually getting much pushback no. despite how many people were committed to those kills. They circumvented very nicely. Can they stop Wild Turtle in the top lane here? Looks like he's going to be able to drop this turret. Rapid Fire is on. He is going to town. A blue card for damage coming out of Bjergsen. They don't even have to watch their backside. They have good breadcrumb wards, and they're in this one for the long haul. Double is able to answer back with another second tier on the other side. TSM still thinking about pushing this one. Well, they're getting their mid inner pushed as well. Very interesting situation here. I think it's a bit of wasted time staying that long, but they will be able to get yeah. the blue buff on the way out. Everybody needing a change of thought, but it looks like we're going to see CLG cutting across. They may want to cut a fight in here. You have Link possibly popping himself up in ultimate, but he does not have his last Q, that third one, to initiate his ult of last breath. So we're just waiting for that next objective to come up. Already warded out with pinks by Team Solo Mid. That's two minutes on to Dragon right now. CLG starting to find what it looks like outside their side of the jungle. I'm looking at Dexter's build as well. He has went with the offensive starter, and then quickly, but then quickly to defense, knowing that it's pretty much triple ability power on the other side when you factor in Amazing's jungle elise. A lot of magic damage there. Uh, the Aegis of the Legion, turned in Lock of the Island Solari, will be of utmost importance when they get to team fights. But it also is a little bit strange for the build. Instead of just going tank elise, he's got a little bit of damage mixed with tankiness, which is not that efficient in itself. Oh man, that was an interesting TF ult. <laughs> he really wanted those race. Gotta see him. He won't even take him. I don't think Double Lift has used Cleanse yet. Because there haven't been team fight, fights. Yeah. I mean, I was just looking at Bjergsen's item build. He finishes Anya's, which typically is one of the strongest points in the game for a TF to go make plays because he can teleport into the back mm -hmm. line. Gold card the AD carry. Zanya's, and by the time he's out of it, the AD carry has to bail out or is dead. 
But against this team, because Doublelift has that cleanse that he has been saving this whole time, that play won't necessarily work as well. So while it is a strong point in the game right. for Bjergsen, it is not as lethal as it normally is because Doublelift has been able to survive with that cleanse summoner spell, and now he theoretically gets to benefit in team fights where it should be the superior summoner. Very close. Link looking like he would have gone in on that. We've seen it before. He'll be the first one in. And then flash out very sneakily. Double lift and team Four out. And push here. Pressure on the mid turret. Rise in the bot lane. Teleports up on both the top lane champions. And a dragon coming up once again, but this is late enough into the game that the dragon could actually just be an extended Baron bait. Once this pink ward yeah. goes down, the TSM could have cleared out there when Amazing saw it. Uh, COG would have had to respect it. They're doing a smart thing here, though. They're sending three people over to act as a presence while Amazing takes Dragon. As long as they don't get picked off here, they're okay. Bjergsen's ultimate not quite off cooldown yet. Very close. Good back and forth. TSM playing a game of tug of war, but it's CLG. Oh, man. Oh, wow. He comes right in. Is he going to be able to take it? Repel and now Bjergsen's down. in a whole world of trouble. Bjergsen indeed, but Link is forced to use that last Q to the left to stop the initiation. This he can the fight, then baby. get the kill. Did they coordinate this correctly? The Soul Shackle coming out from Aphromoo. He gets the lockdown before he goes down. That's the crowd control they needed to follow through with the fight. What an amazing job. Dexter grabs Dragon, and they take down three members of Team Solo Mid. It just turned to disaster when Bjergsen decided to go in against Elise. That was one of those split decision calls that you think is a good idea, but really just baited the team into a whole bunch of trouble. Did not get his Zanyas off throughout that because it wasn't like his team was able to come and follow him up. Right. All the kills that happened to TSM means CLG might get Baron. Dyrus has other plans. Oh, this seems man. This really foolish if he goes for something. Yeah. <laughs> Slowly just comes over the wall. Nonchalantly throws a barrel and it's a little too late for the party. Let's just see that initiation. Quixly thinks he has it. Really good play there by Dexter. Not getting stun carded, then yeah. still coming down to smite it. And then just going full fledge into Bjergsen. Meanwhile, it was all about the catch on to Wild Turtle here. Sarah flashing in to get the rune prison and everyone else finishing him off. Never did TSM have their team as packed together as CLG did, which is an even greater accomplishment for CLG when you consider they were the ones that were split in the first place. Yep. Coming together, CLG's rotations are really something that become top notch at that last second. Usually they're doing it before Dragon needs to be taken. Setting those things in place will give you the initiations you need. Into the initiation that they got. See the Morella or uh, Mikhail's Crucible now coming out from Glebe. Safety for Wild Turtle as well as Double F has his own. Actually, don't see that yet for Aphromoo. A little bit more behind. At 25 minutes, that Dragon grab from CLG and those kills, a big. Big lead along with Baron in their pocket. Double lift is getting pretty big right now, damage wise. Just a BS sword to go with his Infinity Edge and his Static Shiv. They have Baron. Double lift still split pushing right now. Leaves the rest of the team in. They have some of the wards to do it. I guess they're just so strong they really can't be stopped on this. It feels very much like COG is just trying to get as many waves shoving at yeah. once so that they can adequately take outer turrets. The initiation will not be extremely easy for CLG here. Link would have to land a pretty good shot to go in, or a Cocoon or Dark Binding would have to land. They're really just needing to take shots, and even if they land those things, their follow-up damage will be a little dangerous to land. There's a lot of counterplay still left for TSM. Whoa, whoa double it coming out huge, gives the muscle flex, and he just crushes Wild Turtle. Underneath the bicep. It's going to be Link trying to get out of this one. A second turret shot calls out the locker of the Iron Solari from Dexter's safety. Whoa. Looks like they'll be, <laughs> they'll be all right, but you just got picked off by the 80 carry. Yeah, double if wanted to prove a point right there, and he nearly blew himself up, but he did get <laughs> Wild Turtle in the process. That's that big damage jump, and the Baron buff should reach them up a little bit with no Tristana as a threat. They can chunk down this turret through the wind walls, but Dyrus, uh-oh. Doing what he can. They got a few Zanias to play with, and that chaos brings them in a kill. Dexter gets played a little bit there. Yeah, Zanya's paying for itself there. 
Dyrus missed the body slam, and then when he Zonya's, it made CLG all look very dangerous. And Seraph, oh man, he's gonna get gold carded. They don't want to but turn on follow? this. It's so dangerous. Ooh, nice wall. There was the Zonya's from Bjergsen, but where's the follow up there? It was coming from Wild Turtle slowly after. Now pushing CLG out is TSM that was on the upper hand. That's a five minute fumble Ruski coming out of Bjergsen there. He's gonna be waiting for that one to come back up. It's still a 4v4 against a team with Baron. You can see them, and it'll probably tell you it's a bad idea. He's going. The Zanya's play! Wow! <laughs> he had second thoughts after he teleported in there. He's like, all right, I did it. I teleported and got a Zanya's. What now? They didn't have a follow-up plan. But now that stuff is down in CLG because the Baron buff is healed up to full. They might just continue this Siege Rip. Looks like it's going to be real strong from CLG. With Dexter in the bottom lane, they're losing a little bit of pressure. And once TSM sees that, they may feel pretty strong to engage. CLG says, yeah, they may also feel the same. We're going to back off 28 minutes into this game. They don't have enough time to wait for Dragon, but we'll watch it yeah. one more time. The culling is what it ticked him right at the end, it appears. But you can see the amount of yeah. retaliation damage that he took. Not exactly the safest play. Oh, I like it. Spooky Ghost Twin Shadows coming out of Alpha Moon. They're looking to get the chase down once they start these fights. He didn't have to go Mikhail's because nope. Double Lift is running cleanse. Very good pickup. And he gets the elixir. Catch potential. We knew that COG is going to have a bit of an issue initiating. Yeah. Twin Shadows into Dark Binding makes an easier initiation possible. Deathcap onto Bjergsen, though. He needs to be taken seriously here. He's got some impact power now punch. coming out of those cards. Also have the clear they need when they get up to the turrets. We saw that happen. As long as Doublelift doesn't find the AD carry in the front or anybody squishy, your turret should stay alive. You have a Dyrus and you have a Bjergsen on pretty good wave clear. 29 minutes in, pressure is on Team Solo mid's base. Each time these teams have played, it has been both sides that took an inhibitor first. First game was CLG, the next one was Team Solo mid. Flank attack. Dexter's a long ways from home. Double lift, though. He is just destroying Wild Turtle right now, making the fight an impossibility, and now Amazing's the one caught. Double lift, being very strong for his team, allows this to start a fight. Now Seraph, very close, throws on the ultimate, but is forced to back off. Just really not forced. Makes the right call to back off with the team. And double lift, to look at why he's doing so much damage. Three items to just the two and a pickaxe of Wild Turtle, and he decided to go Bloodthirster so he can stay in these fights. A rare pickup right there. Yeah. Absolutely. Instead of Blade of the Rune King, but as far as the damage he is putting out, very good AD ratios on Lucian's abilities. It is a higher damage build for a lot of the stuff that he's going to be doing, plus the added defensive capabilities of that overshield he can get. Up to 440 health of a shield yeah. if he maxes it while clearing these waves out. Let's see what CLG can do. Peppering all sides in the front of TSM's base now. Looks like they're going back towards this top turret. Very low, getting a bit HP, a bit of HP back every so often. But I don't think it's going to be enough to stop double lift. Black Shield is on. A few shots go out. Amazing doesn't even throw down the ultimate on him, knowing it won't do enough. He doesn't have enough gathered. Uh, not the cleanest ult there by Darius. No. Also, very both back card was eaten by the repel of Dexter. So a lot of the big damage spells by TSM out. Bjergsen low on mana. Holding this inhibitor is going to be difficult. Link Good needs another three Qs to get an ultimate up for himself, but he does have the Guardian Angel, so they're staying for the long haul in this. Double lift with focus on the inhibitor. They take it down, and they're also going to get an influx of gold in the top lane when they want it. 24 seconds on to Baron. CLG's got to be careful with what they do in this back. Very measured play by CLG here. They must be frustrating Bjergsen heavily right oh, now. Yeah. He can't land gold cards so far on this team. There was one that got repelled by Dexter, another got windwalled by Link. If he were to get double lift, it would be cleansed away. It could get shot into black shields. He is just not having yeah. a good day on TF right now. And he's only going to be facing Banshee's oh, fails later. As TSM now, Jet, yep. they're making a move. This Baron timing is awful for CLG. They're the ones that had Baron. They went for Dragon at the same moment, and now TSM is bursting it down. CLG is trying their best to get here. It might not make it down fast enough. I don't think it's going down nearly as fast as it needs to. No, it's going to be smited out. That goes to Amazing. What's the focus? Double is not firing just yet, but the first one is a big crit, and he's able to take down Bjergsen. Link finalizes an attack and gets his last breath onto Amazing. A nice pop out by the explosive cast, but Dyrus is only able to offer so much. 
Not going to be in range for another one. The CLG really making moves. TSM comes up with Baron on that one, so they might be able to hold a little bit longer. Baron for three. Yeah. But what is it going to cost them? This will be whether it ends up being. I don't know worth how it. much they'll be able to use it. My gut actually tells me that wasn't that bad for TSM. They tried to bail out. If they could have gotten more people out with their life suit, it would be okay. It's really about these death timers, though. CLG can make something happen in the next 20 seconds. They basically win the game. If they can clear two inhibitors against this team, TSM could not turtle it out. Nope. They, look at what they want to do already, Jack. Instantly onto Dyrus. The Zanyas is used. Can't be saved as he tries to get himself out. Flashes into the front of an inhibitor trying to get over it. And it looks like it's going to be CLG turning TSM's base into shambles here from the top side. They only have a middle inhibitor turret to go through now. All right, when I said my gut feeling was that TSM <laughs> was good for that Baron, it was totally wrong. Because at that point, because CLG had five strong, and the fact that their main wave clear source on TSM was down or unable to participate in the fight, it meant CLG could very easily roll through them. And now they back with loads of gold to power up for the push on the third and final inhibitor. 3,100 gold on Dexter alone. You know things are going really well when you even have that much time to spend out on the Rift. Usually that's bad. When you fight with 3,100 gold, you're losing the fights. But these guys have had map control and have just kept their control overall on the up and up of their team fights and coordination. Now with 8,000 gold on the game and four turrets ahead of Team Solo Mid, they look to close the game here against a Team Solo Mid that just stole Baron from them. And Laugh Whisper on double if makes him even more powerful. Oh, Baron doesn't really matter nope. at this point. It's only on two people on TSM, the support and the AD carry. And with the way Wild Turtle's been getting destroyed this game. Oh my god. By double lift. It's like he's getting hit by a Kog'Maw right now. Eventually there will come a point where TSM would have to peel back to their base, which is why they actually want to fight now. Amazing yep. is in flank position. And TSM would kind of want to go all in on this next one. Amazing. Amazing's pinging that he wants he's, to come around the, the back. But there's that large wave in the top, which means TSM actually can't go here because if they did, that pack of super minions would kill their Nexus turrets. Oh, they just warded out amazing. Didn't see him. Make sure if they walk right towards that Wall section. down, some decent harassment. This would be the time for the fight. Seraph's gonna call it out. He gets the room prison on amazing. Here comes Dyrus. They blow back Seraph into the fight. They do take down media, or amazing though, rather. They're gonna be able to keep pressuring this. Oh, no. Back and forth. Zanyas is going to keep him safe. Link has the Guardian Angel, and I think he's going to have to use it here. Can the team recuperate? It's going to be very hard. This is all well and good for TSM, but their base is going to be attacked very shortly. Going to have to be forced back. It's going to be good for Wild Turtle. He can easily clear this up. I'd say Dyrus and Glebe can do what they can on the turret. He goes right for Link, gets the turret. No, he does not get it onto him. That's going to be the Zanyas called out from Dyrus, and it looks like they're doing what they can while being strangled in by Counterlogic Gaming. That's yeah. one Nexus turret down in all the chaos. TSM was racing against time there. The flank by Amazing was the best that TSM could have hoped for. The fact that the game is not over yet, the fact that they got one inhibitor up, they didn't get clean swept with their inhibitors, and they can actually get all three of them to respawn means they are still very much alive in this game, even if they're still down by a whole lot. Definitely a game for first place, chat. We have to consider how these teams get here. We look at TSM's wins. Yeah, they're undefeated against pretty much all the bottom teams. But when they come out so strong against top teams and then feel they have the win, it starts going in the other team's favor. You can't be a top team if you're always faltering in high caliber games like this. Very tough situation to come through on. A lot of this just happened off the back of Bjergsen, not quite having the best Twisted Fate teleport. Right. I think it's a fantastic champion pick for TSM, but Bjergsen definitely, it's not one of the champions that he's mastered. Yeah. That's for sure. Definitely more practice needed to be done. Amazing wants another flank attack here as the inhibitor gets tested again. CLG is a little bit more ready for this one, it seems like. I'm surprised they haven't pink warded more behind them to try and stop this from happening. Slow pushes in. Double lift Go. again on the front line. Somehow, well, as the AD carry has been able to double lift kind of wants to sit out. in the middle because E will be behind him anyway, and he's kind of protected right. by the wind wall and the black shield more than anything else. I'm just so surprised he's always been able to hit Wild Turtle and almost take him out single handedly. I think we see the fight next wave. As soon as double lift commits or a wind wall is used, 
is when we're most likely to see this. When does the team ever pinch themselves in right here? They have no idea Amazing is back. It looks so dangerous, but can they recuperate? What a spread in the fight, but they're all able to turn around. Amazing does not commit to Dyrus' cast. They oh. were too spread out. Link goes very hard into the middle. Bjergsen stays alive, so does Amazing. And they're not getting all the kills they want. They've only traded mid laners for right now, but they have minions in their favor on CLG. Ah, the map pressure is just too much for GSM to handle. Even though it's a one-for-one -one fight, they are losing control of their base. Objectives are coming up outside the map, but everything's happening right now in TSM's home. It does not look like CLG's able to finish the game just yet. They may need one final push, every wave to come in as well. A lot of disengage here from TSM is able to thwart them off that single Nexus turret. Jeez, this is the slow struggle right now for CLG. They're so close to ending the game, but you can see that TSM is just barely holding on to the last seconds of their life right here. Turtle really desperately trying to stay up, but he gets caught by anything and he would die. Amazing, tries to go in. He makes himself visible to try oh, and call it back. The very big trade there. Dexter gets hit up. This is going to be huge for Turtle. If he can start getting some items, they can really turn things around. It's going to be no more shots. He actually clicks backward. That goes to Amazing. Dyer yes, CP'd in. Does really want to kill on Dexter. I don't know if he's going to get that one, but TSM picks up three. They get few more onto Turtle. Not level 18 yet, so we haven't seen full potential from Triss, but this is definitely on the wire for TSM. It would be a miraculous comeback if TSM could do it real. Oh my gosh. He's oh no! He's down. Or is he? Look at the turn! Oh man! Well... Link should be able to pick up a kill here. Does the body slam make it him out? Oh, what a oh. step! Link just kind of puts his foot out and trips Dyrus as he tries to get away. Okay. They actually could get the Baron here, but then they have to go straight back to their base. They have zero inhibitors right now. So this is all on Lincoln trying to disrupt the backs of TSM more than anything else. Oh my gosh, the teleport from Seraph as well. They're going to wait on this. Why would Does Seraph he have the charge? Get the base? Oh, they can stop him and the minions would win. Oh, what a wall coming in. Very nicely played. CLG's trying to get in. Amazing's hurt. He's able to get the Baron and he flashes out. So does Bjergsen. They are out of there. Look Lickety at the minions. Split, and the minions are pouring in. It's one last Nexus turret. We saw one go down already with two turrets up. This is like potential flashbacks to the TSM vs CLG game that we had in MLG. Quicker! Our TSM held it so well. There's so many oh, minions. Oh, man! Oh, no. Oh, no. Gleave's gonna go down. Wild Turtle's being chased out here. They're not even on the goal side right now. Turtle's the best person to run from minions, home. But he can't get home. He cannot. This is going to be a long haul for him. No. So call his parents. We could it's have too another walk-in and game ender. The second one of the day. Link's going to be in the face of Team Solo mid right now, trying to give him hell. And it looks like the rest of the dream team is trying to trickle in. He's got Seraph in about 10 seconds. The rest of everybody has tunneled onto Wild Turtle right now, who has the hardest shell NA apparently, and is still running able so to long. run on this one. The repel in. Is he arachnophobic? I don't know. Let's find out. Maybe he gets a few shots off. He blocks that out. We can hear the Soul Shackle going down on the other side of the map. They're trying to get the fight down. It's going to be a lock up here. Link almost getting the last few shots on. If he can get to the Nexus, Seraph's getting some damn good auto attacks on. That's going to be the game. 40 minutes on the clock. CLG takes down Team Solo, man. The ending of that game was a little strange, <laughs> to say the least. A little bit hard to wrap our heads around, but it is a still a victory by CLG. And the main thing to keep in mind is they had accumulated such an advantage and mainly just won that because of their structure control. Yeah. They kept the inhibitors cycling down, and even if they were losing team fights, TSM could never safely hold off their base. TSM tried for a home run a few times in that game by going for Baron, but every time they did, they would lose substantial inhibitor control. And in the end of the game, it was really just the super minions and CLG's oh, yeah. knowledge of what they can do, the minions that is, that ended up granting them the victory here because TSM just couldn't hold off the assault of super minions. Man, and we heard it from the man himself. TSM got the picks that they wanted that game and yeah. were thwarted out. Very well played, and it, it was a different game, kind of, from Counter Logic Gaming. One that didn't really involve Doublelift too much. Back to the days where he would just farm. And then once we saw him, he was zeroing out an AD carry in 1v1 situations. Very, very old school CLG. They were able to completely control the game. You are pretty much play a structure game, as we said, but this time the kills started to flow in a little bit more than just two or three. And you could see at the end there, Dexter 
kind of had that exhale because it did get a little bit tense. That yeah, was by no means the clean way that COG wants to be closing out games as they try and work their way towards worlds. It's almost every week it seems like we're saying COG now has sole possession of first place. Yep. And then like two hours later, they don't. Uh, we're well, going to see that again, that again. <laughs> because <laughs> maybe hopefully less than two hours from now. Really we're going to be seeing that from COG. Well, very good games played all throughout the day. Nail biters, to say the least, in most yeah. of these. And a lot of back and forth, different things we've been seeing. A lot of first plays for Hayek bringing out Yasuo. Link brings it out again. That's not his first, but definitely a lot stronger this time. And we see CLG able to adapt patch to patch and really be one of the teams that's kind of having a more successful result as of that situation. Definitely seeing some new champions out of Seraph with the Rise which is really important for these guys yep. to be able to get down. He, when he came over here, he pretty much just had success on Shivana. And the other champions he was playing on, he struggled on very mightily. But he's a player with a lot of potential. Yeah. And people, when Seraph came in, they really expected this guy who was just going to be this Korean god and he can play everything. It's not how it works. You don't just come over here and you're, you're not a god instantly, especially without competitive experience. So he's getting it yeah. better and better. And you can tell CLG is playing better with him with the ganks that Dexter can throw in at the start of the games. But the things that still haven't necessarily come around for CLG is just keeping it together for an extended period of time. Right. They have trouble doing it from game to game staying consistent. They almost lost their consistency halfway through this one. Yeah. But because they had such a big lead, they were able to close it with super mini control. Whenever CLG does get that final bit of map control, it seems like they never let go and they're able to strangle you down. Good play all around from both teams on our third game of the day. Right now, we're going to throw it over to Dash and Freak to hear what the winners have to say on that match. Thanks, gentlemen. We're joined by CLG's bot lane, Double Lift and Afro Moo. Guys, congrats on the win and pulling ahead into first, if only for an hour, before one of the teams in the next match joins you. <laughs> How does that feel to own it? Uh, we've done it a bunch of times before, actually. So <laughs> we're, we're used to it. A familiar feeling. Is it getting stale, least. or are you still happy to be in first? Um, well, it's, <laughs> it's like every time we're in first, then after an hour or the next day, we lose it. So it's like, oh, well, hopefully we can keep it this time. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about, uh, more about a general thing, which is champion select this split compared to last split. For example, in the ban phase here, you guys threw a lot of TSM-specific bans. They're low ban rate champions, 5% on Renekton, 5 you know, things like that. So in a split where there's so many more options for picks and bans, what is your general approach? Uh, Aphromo, I'll direct that question at you. Okay. Uh, generally in Champion Select, it's uh, you think about the meta. What's OP right now? So for we had ban Kog'Maw. Kog'Maw's played for everywhere now. It's really good. Late game is just dominant, so we had to ban that. And then you think about champion or player-specific bans. You know, stuff you don't want to see people play or you know they're really good at. Dyrus on Renekton, he's really going to Renekton historically, always, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Syndra for Bjergsen as well. Yeah, so that makes a bunch of sense. I actually have to press you on this, though, because uh, during the game, uh, TSM's coach Loco Doko tweeted, CLG picked and banned exactly as we predicted, hashtag TSM win. Apparently, he, guys, he read you guys like a book. Uh, so first question is, does that concern you at all that your champ select is apparently predictable? Uh, no, not when... <laughs> we know what they're going to pick as well, and then they don't play it well. So. Uh, see, do you think it was... Wow. First of all, wow, shots fired. Uh, second of all... Um, <laughs> <laughs> took a second to register there. <laughs> I was so ready with my other questions. I wasn't prepared to, to, res to respond to everything you said. Um, but then, too, so then how much weight do you put on to uh, how you play the game versus how you prepare the game with picks and bans? Because it seems like, oh, well, they just played it wrong. Like, was it worrisome that, what if they played it right? Were they going to beat you with predictions? Uh, normally, for us, it's not really what about their game that they want to play. We just play our own game. It doesn't matter if, you know, they predict us because we're going to play our game and we're going to shoot on you. All right. Shots free. fired free. I'm just kidding. <laughs> some actually played very well. Yeah, they if, did. If you, think, if you look at that game from an objective standpoint, they played well. Honestly, they did. Actually, uh, one, one further press, actually, for you specifically, since Afro was in shooting uh, bullets in the air the whole time. Mm -hmm. Peter, uh, so apparently you had to ban Kog'Maw. Traditionally, you're really slow at picking up new 80 carries. It took you, like, months for the Lucian hype train. Yeah. Maybe it's going to take you off for the Kog'Maw hype train. No, uh, I'm already on the Kog'Maw hype train. I think every competitive 80 carry right now knows how strong Kog is. Why didn't you play it? Why didn't I play it? Yeah. Uh, well, our strategy was to ban it for various reasons that I don't want to talk <laughs> about, but, um, like... 
I'm sure Turtle plays it, Sneaky plays it, uh, Cop plays it. Pretty much everyone plays it. Actually, the only AD LCS AD carry I don't see play it much is Cutie Pie. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure he can play it as well. I mean, everyone knows how to play Kog'Maw, and he's just so strong right now. All right, well, talking about how well TSM played this game, as you said they did, given the fact that we saw Seraph get behind a little bit, there was one successful gank top uh, for him, but following that, he went down on CS, they had a failed counter gank. What does that do to the other lanes, especially Aphromoo and Link as shot callers, w when one lane is losing? Like, how does that transfer into your bot lane? Well, for us, whenever I see three people top lane, and I know Seraph's getting, you know, just three men, and I know the feeling of getting three men, I, I just know we can play super aggressive. And at that exact same time, uh, because TF ported top, it frees up Link to do whatever he wants. And he's like, can I come bottom and can we, can we just kill these guys? And, I was, and we were like, yeah, we, we could totally do it. So we just dove in 3v2. And actually, Eve came to counter gank, and she died too. So it was just like a really perfect situation for us. Um, so whenever you try to snowball your top lane, your bottom lane should suffer. And there's always a back and forth. I'm actually glad you bring up the uh, Bjergsen ultimates, because we actually have our, our uh, replay, if we can pull that one up. It's about 23 minutes in. Starts out with a, uh, I guess, a questionable TF ulti, if you want to walk us through this fight. I don't uh, know. Oh, he's, he's going for the I dragon. Think, I tell he's going to drag. Dexter's soloing drag, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't remember what happens. I think Dexter just gets a good smite here. Bjergsen should not have carded Dragon for the steal. Instead, have should have uh, gold carded Dexter so that he couldn't jump him like this. And he just dies for free. And uh, right here, Afro's calling me to come kill Turtle. He flashes, and that's super important for the next fight because he flashed and he still died. It would have been fine if he flashed and he lived, but uh, Turtle flashed and died. And so next fight, it's guaranteed win. Uh, and then they're just split up because uh, I guess it was kind of a panic call. Like, oh my god, he's on Dragon. We have to stop it. Uh, and they're split up. So in the rest of the game, you guys seem to be mostly in control, aside from uh, that, that late game where you like lost four champions <laughs> up at their nexus, other than that. Uh, but when you're starting to, to grow a lead like this, how do you kind of keep the, the train rolling? How do you keep the, the, the ball rolling? Honestly, you, don't, you have to not be scared. And I think at the end of the game, we were really scared to end the game when Tristan had no flash for a minute when we were sieging bottom tower. And we're like, okay, we can dive, we can dive, but like, we weren't actually doing it. And it's just you have to be confident in yourself to be able to end the game properly and not be too worried about like repercussions because you're so far ahead. Okay. Awesome. All right, one final question for you guys is that you've got Dig tomorrow, and now we don't know how the, the game later today is going to finish. It being one, them being one of the teams that might be contesting you for first place, how important is that game, and what is the preparation that you're going to be doing even through the rest of today for tomorrow's game? Double lift? Uh, it's super important, obviously. Just trust me to every team. Just because Dig is first place doesn't mean that I think that the win against them is any more important than like a win against Curse or Complexity. But uh, right now, Dig seems to be losing to us. I think they're 0 2 or maybe even 0 3 so far in the regular season. And uh, yeah, they, they just have a lot of trouble against us. And I hope that they haven't really figured it out. Um, because like, it's, it's kind of hard when you're winning against a team to understand exactly like, why you're crushing them so bad. Uh, but it's really easy when you're losing to identify the mistakes and kind of fix them. So it's the kind of the onus is on them to have fixed their mistakes rather than us like changing any of our game plan or anything like that. But obviously, 4.11 is like a big change for every team. So I'm interested to see how they adapt. Absolutely. Afro, may anything to add on to that, or is that about it? That's it. All right. Great. Well, by the way, it is 0-2 against you guys. But best of luck in making it 0-3 tomorrow. And thanks for joining us here on the desk with all of your insight. Now we've got to take a 210 second Nocturne ult coming our way. When we get Vision back, we'll be diving into our final LCS match, LMQ versus Dignitas. The NALCS returns after this. Maybe I should go into voice acting. Yep. I will not forget who I am. The Repel comes down. It's going to be one last spell fuck. He doesn't get it to work. He can actually turn this one around. Here comes Bjergsen. The gold card was just in range. Yeah, CLG trying to combat Whoa. him right there. Link gets it. That's Link. He has to activate his own ultimates. Now initiated by him. They go by his call and continue. Soul Shackle coming out from Aphromoo. He gets the lockdown before he goes down. That's the crowd control they needed to follow through with the fight. Amazing. Tries to go in. He makes himself visible to try oh, and call it back. The very big trade there. Dexter gets hit up. This is going to be huge for Turtle.